Welcome to How to Solve Poverty. Today's question, what is poverty? How might we start solving poverty? To find out, let's dive into today's lesson. Spoiler alert, during this course, we're gonna cover the problem, the systems underlying it, the root causes in those systems, obstacles that we may come in contact when trying to create solutions, and then a portfolio of solutions that we may be able to use to solve this. The reason I say portfolio is because no one solution is going to actually solve this. And the reason being is because each of these solutions are addressing a different leverage point within this complex system. During this course, I'm also going to teach you systems thinking. I'm gonna walk you through using an iceberg model and identifying those leverage points so that you can see when I make a change here at this leverage point, it has this effect in the system and may actually help to solve this. Towards the end of the course, I'm going to help you develop a plan so that you can either contribute to one of these solutions that we talk about today, or you can go forward and start creating your own solution. Along the way, we're going to be talking about experts in their specific field working on these types of solutions, boosts on the streets. We're going to be asking me what their solution is, how it works, why it may help solve this, why it might not, and who benefits and who is harmed by implementing the solution. Some of this course was also created with the help of AI. And to help you identify those portions, I used AI enhanced voices through Descript, which is the editing program that I use. You're going to hear two voices. You're going to hear Ethan, which will answer some of the questions I ask. Ethan, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Ethan. I'll be narrating the material created for this course that was created using AI tools. And then you're also going to hear from Emily, who's going to present our activities that go along with each one of the lessons. At Plato University, we don't want you just intaking information. We want you to be able to actually apply it. So with every lesson, we introduce a short activity for you to practice some of the skills that you learned. Emily, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Emily. I'll be presenting the activities at the end of our lessons. Whether the lesson was created with AI or with an expert, I always encourage you to go do more of your own research. Think for yourself. Each one of the lessons is going to present extra resources that can help you to develop more skills in that area or to further your understanding. But today, let's start simply and first understand what is the problem. Explain succinctly what poverty is from first principles. Poverty is a multifaceted and complex phenomenon characterized by the lack of sufficient material, social, and economic resources necessary to meet basic human needs and participate fully in society. It goes beyond the absence of income and extends to the deprivation of essential goods and services such as food, clean water, shelter, education, health care, and social support systems. Poverty can manifest in various forms, including absolute poverty, a lack of basic necessities, and relative poverty, falling below the average living standards in a particular society. Why is poverty a problem? Poverty is a significant problem with far-reaching consequences at both the individual and societal levels. Poverty leads to immense human suffering, depriving individuals of their fundamental rights, dignity, and quality of life. Lack of access to basic needs results in malnutrition, preventable diseases, and a reduced life expectancy. High levels of poverty exacerbate income and wealth inequality, leading to social tensions and potential unrest. This can undermine social cohesion, stability, and trust within communities and nations. Persistent poverty can hinder economic growth and development by limiting human capital investment, productivity, and innovation. A large impoverished population means lost potential for economic contributions. Poverty can create a vicious cycle where limited access to education and opportunities perpetuate disadvantage across generations. Breaking this cycle is vital for sustainable progress. Poverty is not confined to one region or country. It is a global challenge. Addressing poverty is crucial for fostering peace and stability and achieving global sustainable development goals. Why should people care about poverty? Addressing poverty benefits society as a whole. Reducing poverty stimulates economic growth and prosperity by creating a larger consumer base boosting demand for goods and services. Decreasing poverty reduces social tensions and disparities, contributing to more stable and cohesive societies. 
Combating poverty improves access to health care and education, fostering healthier and more educated populations, which are essential for progress. Poverty is a shared global challenge. Empathy and solidarity with those in poverty drive international cooperation and collective efforts to eradicate it. Why might someone start solving this problem today? Addressing poverty requires multifaceted approaches at local, national, and global levels. Individuals can start contributing to poverty reduction through the following steps. Support charitable organizations. Contribute to reputable charities or NGOs dedicated to poverty alleviation. Research and donate to organizations that have a proven track record of effective interventions. Advocate for policy change. Engage with policymakers and advocate for evidence-based policies that address the root causes of poverty, such as education, healthcare, affordable housing, and social safety nets. Promote awareness and education. Raise awareness about poverty-related issues through social media, community events, and educational campaigns. Educate others about the complexities of poverty and its impact on individuals and society. I'm an everyday citizen. What small action could I take right now to help solve poverty? As an everyday citizen, you can take small yet impactful actions to contribute to poverty reduction. Offer your time and skills to local organizations that provide services and support to people in poverty. Volunteer at food banks, homeless shelters, or community centers. Choose to support local businesses and social enterprises that prioritize fair wages and sustainable practices, thus helping to create local economic opportunities. Be thoughtful about charitable donations. Research and donate to organizations that are transparent and have a measurable impact on poverty alleviation. Educate yourself and others about financial literacy and responsible money management. Encourage saving budgeting, and making informed financial decisions to build economic resilience. Engage in empathetic conversations with individuals experiencing poverty. Understand their challenges and experiences without judgment or stereotypes. Remember, collective efforts, no matter how small, can make a difference in the fight against poverty. And finally, the greatest contribution you can make towards solving poverty is either coming up with solutions or contributing to existing solutions and accelerating their innovation and adoption. This will also require you to learn and educate yourself, which is why you are listening to this course. So really the best action is to start learning. With that, I will hand it back to you, Brandon, so you can teach our listeners about MISO research. During this course, we will be using the MISO method of action research. Now, action research is a collaborative and participatory research approach that focuses on addressing real-world problems and improving practices within a specific context. It involves systematic inquiry, reflection, and action taken by practitioners, researchers, stakeholders, and even you, my dear listener, to generate practical solutions and positive changes in their environment. Action research is characterized by its iterative nature involving cycles of planning, action, observation, and reflection. Now we're going to specifically be using this method of research because it focuses on two things, problem solving and knowledge generation. So action research allows people to directly engage with issues they face in their work or their environment, leading to practical solutions that address real problems. That's what we care about here at Plato University. The things that you learn, you can apply in real life and solve some real problems. The second reason is associated with knowledge generation. Action research generates context-specific knowledge that may not be captured by traditional research methods. This knowledge is often valuable for localized decision-making. We want you to gain the knowledge and skills specific to the problems that you want to be able to solve. By the research that you're doing, you're going to uncover the issues associated with that specific problem in that specific context and skills and knowledge that you can actually use to formulate a solution to that problem. So how do we do MISO action research? Well, MISO stands for Media, Interview, Survey, Observation. So starting with media, these are videos, audios, maps, articles, books. And during this course, you will hear recommendations from experts on media resources to further your research. All of these will be listed on the Plato University platform. 
which you can join for free. Now the I in MISO stands for interview. And this is where you're asking an expert to gain knowledge. This course leans heavily into interviews with top experts in their field. Some lessons have been developed with the help of AI. However, we will continue to update this course with expert interviews as those with knowledge come forward to contribute. The S in MISO Action Research stands for survey. This is where you're using a set of questions with people who have knowledge on a topic or for general knowledge or opinions. During the lessons, stakeholders of these issues are discussed. I encourage you to actually talk with these stakeholders and ask them questions about how their problem affects them. And the last part of MISO research is observation. This is where you're using your surroundings or memories of being somewhere or creating an experiment or simulation in order to gain knowledge. Each one of the lessons of this course has an activity associated with it. These will ask you to make observations, experiment, or understand your own experience with the problem. So throughout this course, you'll be practicing MISO action research. Your activity today is simple. I want you to reflect. What do you think the problem is? Why do you care about it? And what skills and talents could you bring to help solve this problem? In each one of the lessons you hear coming soon, there's going to be different skills that are listed out that are going to be needed to solve this problem. You may have some of those skills or be excited to learn them. Take note of those because that's where you'll be able to actually contribute and help solve this global challenge. After your reflection, listen to the rest of the course where we will help you understand the systems and causes underlying the problem, the obstacles you'll face solving it, and a portfolio of solutions already being done that you may be able to contribute to or where new ideas still need to emerge for which you may be able to create a solution. Thank you so much for your time and attention. If you want to learn the skills to solve this global challenge, join us for free at Plato.University for exclusive content, extra resources, and actionable exercises with every lesson.